Okay, so what's, what's uh, one of the first things you might do to give it a structure? Order. Hmm. Well, you might try, okay? <laughs> Uh, and certainly, you could give it, there's nothing stopping you from giving it the lexicographic order, right? Where your dictionary order, if you like, comparing things, first the first thing, then the second thing, et cetera. Okay, but, but that, we don't often give it that kind of structure because it doesn't happen to be so useful for many of our purposes, right? Okay. Um, what's another structure you might try to give the set? Really? Yeah, some kind of arithmetic. So the first thing you might think of is, uh, is uh, addition. Perhaps you want to add two uh, k-tuples. Maybe uh, uh, the one k-tuple is uh, uh, x1 through xk. And I'll ask you to add that to y1 through yk. And what's, the, what's a natural way to define this addition so that what you get back is also another k-tuple? Yeah, just add element-wise. Everybody's done this before. If you're in this class, um, you've gotten here because you have done something like this before. We think of this sometimes as uh, a vector. Okay, and There's a reason for it, because what we're about to do is define a vector space structure. Now, um, sometimes we denote this by a, a little symbol that allows us to refer to the thing without writing out all the k pieces. Okay, So this is addition, element-wise. Question, um, what's another thing you might try to define for uh, a set like this with an addition? Harris? OK, well, you might try to define some kind of multiplication. OK. And I'll just tell you in advance that the obvious way to multiply doesn't lead to anything uh, that's very nice, right? You might, for instance, multiply two vectors and get another vector by multiplying coordinate-wise. It's the first thing you might think of, right? Certainly, you can check if you wanted it to be uh, to have some nice properties. You can check that that is certainly closed under multiplication, produces another vector. Um, it's uh, commutative and associative. In fact, it, it has um, an identity element consisting of all ones, right? But no notion of inverse, right? So that, that mul uh, element-wise multiplication, not so nice. It doesn't turn this thing into a field, OK? OK, so we, we generally don't, uh, we don't try to endow it with a, a field uh, uh, structure. But it does have another kind of multiplication, which gives it what's called a vector space structure, and that's scalar multiplication. And what I'll have you notice about scalar multiplication is that um, when you multiply a element, a vector, by a scalar, which is basically an element from the real numbers, so this is in R. We sometimes call this a scalar, it just means something in R. Um, well, OK, you do the natural thing, which is you basically take uh, everything and multiply it by this, this uh, scalar alpha. OK? Notice, this is not a multiplication that takes in two vectors and spits out another vector. It takes in a vector and a scalar and spits out a vector. OK? Bonnie. There, there isn't a, uh, yeah, so the question, so if, if you have a bunch of ones here, uh, if, if, if one is behaving like an identity, which it is, then you might ask yourself, is there some way, if this were a times, uh, to multiply, you, you give me a vector, uh, multiply it by something to get a bunch of ones. You're going to see you run into problems as soon as any of the coordinates are non-zero, or uh, some of the coordinates are zero, but not all of them. OK? So if you want it to be a field, there's a, there should be a, a single element that's not invertible that doesn't have a multiplicative identity uh, inverse. 
right? And that should be the additive identity. The additive identity here is the, the, the vector consisting of all zeros. So with the obvious multiplication, um, you won't have every element. Uh, there'll be some non-zero elements that are not invertible. Okay. Nice question. Yes. So if you replace the other problems with certain identical multiplication, would that improve the Chimney behavior or would it just get rid of it? Um, Oh, interesting. I, I haven't thought about that. That's an excellent question. I haven't thought about that. Um, but what you're making an argument for is that th that particular multiplication might have some natural pairing with, uh, with the uh, lexicographic order, right? I haven't thought about that. It's something you that would be great for you, for you to think about and see if uh, something interesting can be said. Okay. Okay. Yes, question. Paul. Uh, equality means uh, basically, yeah, so I didn't say this, but two vectors are equal if every element is equal. Are you suggesting a different notion of equality? No, I'm just saying it's different. Yeah, yeah, we'll say that, they, that, that every element uh, is equal. Okay. Now, of course, you might want to consider uh, something that's a little more uh, of an equivalence, uh, a, a little more relaxed, right? You might say if you had different equivalence relation, you might let some of the things be equivalent to other things if certain things are true, but not something we normally do with this space. Okay, Okay. lots of excellent questions. So uh, what do we have here? We have an addition, we have a scalar multiplication, and you can see that this scalar multiplication, even though it's not a full-fledged multiplication of two vectors, uh, it does satisfy, does enjoy a lot of the properties that we liked uh, when we were talking about fields. So in particular, it happens to be um, uh, associative, uh, distributive, uh, with, with addition it satisfies distributive property, uh, it's um, commutative, associative, distributive, etc. Lots of nice properties. And so it turns uh, all these laws hold. Uh, hold. Uh, so it turns RK into what's called a vector space. And this is something you'd study more uh, in an abstract algebra course. Okay. <laughs> Quick save there. Okay, very good. Uh, what else? Well, RK also has some additional structure. Uh, it has what's called an inner product. And again, there's some overlap with your algebra course. In a multivariable calculus class, you sometimes say the word dot product uh, instead. Uh, in an advanced linear algebra course, you might say inner product. Uh, and this is a multiplication of, of vectors, a product of vectors, that doesn't spit out another vector. It spits out a scalar. Yes, yeah, so here, x dot y is defined to be the, oh, interesting, element-wise product, but then you add everything together, okay? And this, uh, this symbol, sigma, stands for sum, okay? It's a Greek letter, sigma. And uh, it basically means take this, index sub i, each of the i's here 